I was blessed uh, uh, maybe 25, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. I don't know. They've flown away. Uh, the years have flown away. Uh, the memories have not. I was working with Robert Maplethorpe, the photographer who got himself in, in great big controversies all the time because of nude photos and uh, erotic photos and all kinds of things you can call the human body. And there was one batch of these photographs that I was privileged to work with that Robert ended up calling the Black Book, which is a, a, a big cocktail party table, cocktail pa table party book of photographs from head to front to back, nothing but black male nudes, holes, hundreds of them. And so I got to bask in this because I had to write about it. And I was a very happy woman during that period. <laughs> and there are two poems in, in, the, in, in participles that come from that, so that, that batch of poems. And I want to share them with you. of course George Jackson doing push-ups and visiting with Angela Soledad mi amor Soledad confined to his beauty alone fighting cement walls for air Malcolm's last breath, King's crumbling torso, speak to me of beauty, blood, beauty, courage, sweating, rage. Of course he's Lumumba, see only the eyes. Bob Marley wail in the night. Ralph Featherstone, burning temples as pages of books become ashen and smolder by his ankles. Walter Rodney's blood fresh soaked in the streets. Leon Damas spoke poems with his face. Amy Cesaire cursed our enemies, making welcome our true voice. The visage of a people continually mourning Recognizing our beauty so slowly. Our heroes fade. Like Jackie Wilson in the middle of the night. In the still of the night. Soledad, mi amor. Soledad. Soledad.
so glad you all enjoyed that with us because uh, I enjoy that. <laughs> I was going to go ahead and enjoy it whether you enjoyed it or not, but I'm so glad we enjoyed it together. Um, okay, how do I do this? Uh, let me, I know how to do this. This is called number five. <laughs> And I could make up a really good one to go with that, couldn't I? Um, but it's part of the lizards. But it's, it's, it's be branching out from uh, inter it's between, it's branching out from limbs into bigger words. Hey. I was asked by a, a, a a feminist press and a, a, woman, a women's edition of one generation of women talking to another generation of women writers. And we were all assigned somebody and some of these young somebody sent all of us letters. And it just so happened that I knew the mother of the somebody who sent me the question. So I thought that was really funny. And then I thought well, what was funny is that she was a writer because her mother was a dancer and she should by all rights be a dancer, not a writer at all. But that's not what she had decided. So I wrote back. I was trying to be encouraging, but I sort of got started out on the wrong foot that day. And this is what happened. Querida Antiga Isa, you almost got it. You really did. Born of the blood of struggle we all were, even if we don't know it. What if poetry isn't enough? What you gonna do then? <laughs> Paint, dance, put your backfield in motion and wait for James Brown to fall on his knees like it's too much for him? What? Too much for James? Yeah, didn't you ever see the sweat of, of, of from his brow into a, forming into a, a, a libation of passion? Make a semicircle of, 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 of love from in front of his body? A half a moon of exertion washing away any hope he had of standing it. Can't stand it. So he falls to his knees. And three Jamesian niggas in a stroll so sharp it hurts carry over to him a black cape, a black cape shining like the northern star, shining like the grease in the middle of your head, shining like your mother's legs on a Sunday afternoon, or her face after rehearsal, or after she had you. James falls to his knees, because he can't take it. He's pleading, please, 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 don't go. We look to see who brought James Brown to his knees? So overwrought with the power of love. So weak, we think. That's why poetry is enough. It brings you to your knees. And when we look up from the petals of sweat, the world's still right there and the children still have bruises, tiny white caskets, and their mothers weep like Mary Sugar. There is nothing more sacred than a glimpse of the power of the universe. It brought James Brown to his knees. Little Anthony, even Jackie Wilson, pretty motherfucker that he was, dropped no knee pads in the face of the might we have to contend with. And sometimes, Young black boys bleed to death down on the asphalt, face down on the asphalt, because falling to our knees 
It's like a public admission so big, a great old scarlet letter. Can't, we can't, don't want to do anything. We don't want to get away. We don't want to escape any feeling, any sensation of being can come alive right down on us. And yes, my tears and sweat may decorate the ground like a bebe in IET or a sand drawing in Melbourne. But in the swooning, in the delirium of a felt life, lies a poem to be proud of. Does it matter? Well, can you stand up? The point is not to fall down and get up dusting your bottom. I always hated it when folks said that to me. The point is you fall on your knees and let the joy of surviving bring you to your, to your feet. You didn't even touch your bottom, it's not dirty. You didn't even graze the earth. No, it's the stuff of living fully that makes the spirit of the poem let you show your face again and again. I used to hide myself behind dark glasses, big dark glasses and long billowing skirts, big hats. Anything protect me from the gazes that somebody would see I had lived a little bit, felt something too terrible for casual conversation. And all this was obvious, they say, from looking in my eyes. That's why I used to read poem after poem with my eyes shut. What a feat! So that memory would take over and leave my tequila bodyguard in a quarter out the way somewhere, and my eyes that simply came throughout my body, they say my hands sculpt the air with words, and my face becomes the visions of a character's voice. I don't know, I left my craft to chance and sphere. Someone would see I care too much, take me for a chump, laugh, and go home. This is not what happened. Is poetry enough to man the picket lines? To answer the phone at the rape crisis center? To shield women entering abortion clinics from demons with crosses and illiterate signs defying the horizon? To keep our children from believing they can buy hope with a pair of sneakers or another nasty filter for a cheap glass pipe? No! A million times no! But... Poetry can bring those bleeding women and children out of time, up close enough for us to see ourselves there. Then the separations, what makes me, me and you, drop away. And the truths we constantly avoid, shut our eyes to, hold our breath hoping we won't be found out surfaces, darling. And we are all, every one of those dark and bloody spaces. Those memories are no less ours than the morning. Yes, the morning will be honorable enough to endure with our eyes open. The coroner cannot simply bring her hand down over our eyelids, leaving us to the silence of not life, the solitude of the unreachable. Can you stand up, child? Hands stretched out to reach again, not so you would conquer the world. You did that when you couldn't raise your head and your body trembled, so you scared your mama. That was when you, you found the poem that, that took over and gave you back what you discovered you did not have to give up. All oh, that fullness of breath, Houdini in an emotional maze. Free, at last. But nobody will know unless you tell them. Do you really want to write? Do you really want to write?